everyone. This meeting of the Essex County Board of County Commissioners is hereby called to order. Due to the pandemic, this meeting is being conducted remotely. I'm on Facebook, the live is public, providing public Pardon me? To all participating in this meeting, please be mindful to put your microphone on mute until speaking. Additionally, please identify yourself by putting your name on the record each time before you speak. Thank you. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Cooper. Here. Commissioner Gill. Here. Commissioner Graham. Here. Commissioner Johnson. Absent. Commissioner Luciano. Here. Commissioner Mercado. Here. Commissioner Siebel. Here. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Here. Commissioner President Richardson. Here. Thank you, Madam Clerk. We will omit this salute to the flag since we are conducting this meeting remotely. However, let us pause for a moment of silence for all of those who have perished under COVID. 19. Thank you. I have before me certification from the clerk that this meeting is in compliance with the Open Public Meetings Act. Madam Clerk, are there any transcripts to be approved? Uh, yes, Mr. President, there is one, and it's for conference board meeting January 19th, 2022. Commissioner, any questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Seabow and a second from Vice President Pomaris to approve the transcript. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Seabow. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Absent. Uh, Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Clerk. Are there any topics of discussion? Uh, Mr. President, there are none. Thank you. In that case, uh, thank you. In that case, Madam Clerk, let's move to the public comment session. Today's meeting is a combined conference board meeting and we will vote on every item on the agenda. However, since we are meeting remotely, public has an opportunity to submit questions and comments for consideration and call in. At this portion of the meeting, the clerk will have additional instructions for our callers, Madam Clerk. Constituents were given the opportunity to call in or send emails for public comment prior to the meeting. If you're calling in, you will be acknowledged in the order that your call was received. Emails received for public comment will be read after the calls are completed. At this time, our public information officer will announce the caller so they can state their comment or question and be reminded uh, you have three minutes to speak. Please do not have your laptop or any electronic device on while calling in. At this time, we're accepting only calls pertaining to agenda items. Please note you'll have the opportunity to call back later in the meeting at the designated time for public comment session on non-agenda items. Kyle Malumba, Public Information Officer, please begin our public comment session now. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Kyle Malumba, Public Information Officer for the Board of Commissioners. We do not have any callers waiting to speak at this time. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. President, um, we also don't have any written emails uh, for comment public comment regarding agenda items at this time. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to ordinances on introduction and first reading. 
Madam Clerk, do we have any ordinance or resolutions for, for inter introduction and first reading? Uh, Mr. President, we do not. Do we have any for second reading and public hearing listing only? Mr. President, we do not. Okay, do we have any ordinance or resolutions on second reading and public hearing? Yes, Mr. President, I have one ordinance number 0 2022 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 and it will be added to the record at a later date. Uh, I do hereby declare the public hearing on ordinance 0 2022 0 0 0 0 0 if there's any member of the public who email comments for or against this ordinance, we will read it into the comments into the record and respond to you in writing. Or if there are any callers in the queue. Mr. President, we do not have any callers in the queue waiting to speak. In that case, Mr. McInerney, do you have any questions? I have no questions on this. We've discussed this the last uh, two prior meetings. Thank you. Mr. Paolo Vecchio. Nothing to add, Mr. President. Commissioners, questions or comments? Very now. I have a motion from Commissioner Mercado and a second from Commissioner Luciano to close the public hearing on Ordinance 0 2022 Do I have the same mover and second to approve the ordinance? Yes. Okay, roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Absent. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Okay, thanks, Madam Clerk. Let's move to resolution number one, which is from the Division of Housing and Community Development, and it will be read into the record at a later date. Mr. Jackson. Uh, good evening, Mr. President uh, and Commissioners. Uh, Mr. Lombardi will handle this item. Uh, good evening. Uh, Craig Lombardi, Project Coordinator for the Division of Housing and Community Development. As you may recall from a few months ago, the board uh, had approved the allocation of ESG COVID funds, also known as ESG TV funds, for street outreach and shelter operation activities that were impacted by the COVID pandemic. Um, today, we are requesting that the board authorize the county to enter into subrecipient agreements totaling 870,000 for shelter operation activities and, and 80,000 for street outreach activities uh, with those agencies that had applied for funding and were subsequently recommended and are being subsequently recommended for this funding. Uh, uh, a quick note, uh, the these ESG CD funds were made available from the federal government to, uh, during the pandemic in order to supplement the uh, ESG funds that we are normally awarded on an annual basis. Um, um, does anyone have any questions re regarding this, uh, this request? Mr. Paul Vecchio. I don't have any comments. Mr. McInerney. Uh, just a little more elaboration on the specific use of the funds. Yes. Okay, well, uh, shelter operations and street outreach. So street outreach would, would involve, obviously, uh, uh, helping those folks who are homeless and walking the streets, reaching out to them, trying to get them into a program and helping them out. And shelter operations is that takes them to that next step. and. Uh, you know, that will in include identifying what a person's issue might be, getting them uh, counseling, helping them 
with job interviews, whatever it takes to try to help a person to uh, not be homeless. And also, obviously, shelter operations would include taking someone into the shelters. And uh, the, the key, again, is to try to get people who are homeless or at risk of homelessness uh, back to a, a more stable uh, living situation. Is uh, is the Newark YMCA still uh, an integral part of that homeless uh, shelter program? Yes, they are. They are very active and uh, one of the one of the more active agencies out there. And so that they this some of this funds will inure to them for for uh, services rendered for the rooms that they have there. Yes. Uh, yeah. They. They have been recommending that they receive an award of one hundred ninety thousand eight hundred dollars. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. McInerney. Commissioners, any questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Graham, and it's, I'm sorry, from Commissioner Yeah, from Commissioner Graham, and a second from Commissioner uh, McConnell. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Ricardo. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Johnson absent. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner C. I'm Commissioner uh, Vice President Pomares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to resolutions two through four, which are from the Division of Community Action and will be added to the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Uh, Mr. President, uh, Mr. McCord will handle items two through. Good evening, commissioners. This is Terrence McCoy with the Division of Community Action, coming before you with a renewal of our annual agreement with the Department of New Jersey Department of Community Affairs for the Community Service Block Grant Program with services to the low-income constituents of this county to continue services for a um, low income population. And these grant dollars are being subcontracted out to our uh, CAP agencies that uh, receive these funds that are entitlement funds for every year. First uh, agency would be the East Orange Community Development Corporation. Here we was receiving an amount of $113,750. Uh, resolution number three would be our Irvington Township of Irvington, Irvington Neighborhood Improvement Corporation, who is receiving $107,500. And the Montclair Neighborhood Development Corporation, who is receiving $86,250. Any questions or comments? Mr. Paolo Vecchio. Yes, uh, Mr. McCoy, how do you select these three agencies, these three communities? These agencies are our CAP agencies that get these funds every year. They are entitlement agencies that have been getting these funds for the last 30 years. There's no RFP requirements for these grants to be for, to divide it up to the agencies. However, if agencies would like to um, you know, get involved, we will sit down and discuss it with them on a further basis and include them in the process of getting grant dollars. Okay, thank you. Mr. President? Uh, no, I, don't, I have no questions, Mr. President. Mr. President, I have a question. I know there are no matching funds, but I'm curious to know, uh, has this amount of money changed from last year, or are we getting the same amount, or are we getting more? Through you, Mr. President. These funds are uh, the startup 
the, the money is given to the county piecemeal. So we will be coming before the board to amend the grant because we're going to receive additional dollars probably uh, within the, the second quarter of the year. Is it more than last year? Uh, right now we can't tell because we won't know until we get the next award, which will probably won't be until around May. Um, usually we get around uh, a million point five um last year that's what we got a million point five last year so we're hoping that we'll get the same amount this year okay thank you you've answered my question okay mr president um thank you commissioner Cooper. how many cap agencies do we have and what's the process to become a cap agency in Essex County, we have four. However, we only fund three. Newark is its own population. They get their money directly from the state. The process to become a CAP agency is that we will sit down with an agency who's interested, go through their paperwork. We had one agency that was involved, that wanted to be involved. However, the paperwork was not uh, up to par, so we couldn't include them in becoming a CAP agency. They would have to apply through the state to become a CAP agency, and the county would um, help them through that process of becoming a CAP agency. And what does CAP stand for? Community Action Partnership. All right, thank you. Absolutely. Commissioners, any other questions, comments? I have one. How, how do you measure outcomes? So you give them money and how, how do they report out in terms of what they've done with the money, uh, how whatever is accomplished? How do you measure what they do with the money? And Though, through you, Mr. Done? President, we, uh, we, get quarter, we get monthly reports and we do monitoring um, every quarter. It's based on the amount of money that they're spending, the number of participants that they are serving, and the number of program services that they are providing to the community. So they service the community in what in what way? They, what are the they services have a, that some of these people provide? Some of the services would be of uh, the food pantry. Uh, also, they have classes for financial literacy for people that are trying to get budgeting assistance on how to manage their rent, how to manage their money on buying food, paying their utilities. We also have housing counseling where folks are at odds with the landlord. So we have counselors that sit with them and do mediation work between the landlord and the tenant to try and help them get streamlined on not being evicted or trying to get the tenant to become more compliant with the following the housing code standards. So is there a certain number of uh, participants or residents that they have to um, see on a monthly basis or is just whoever comes in? So is that number whoever can, comes uh, in. So it can be from, whoever, yeah. um, it could be from one to a hundred. Yes, it could be. We ask them to give us a level of service of number of participants that they're going to service. You know, some some come under and most come over. Okay. And the majority of times they come over the number of level of services that they have that they put down in their in their uh, contract. All right. Thank you very much, Commissioners. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Gill and a second from Commissioner Cooper to take resolutions two through four as one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Johnson, absent. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Siebel? Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? Yes. Commissioner President Richardson? Yes. So moved. Okay, Madam Clerk, let's move to resolutions number five from the Division of Community Health. And it will be read into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this resolution will uh, is an acceptance and approval of participation in the CHA uh, grant uh, program, County Environmental Health Act. Uh, the county's health department and the board so approves administer and delegate environmental health activities around the solid waste, uh, air, water, noise, and pesticide pollution, and report these uh, their findings into the New Jersey Environmental Management System. And there is a uh, a uh, budget insertion coming on later in the agenda uh, to provide for funding for this. Let me suggest the approval of Mr. Jackson, you're fading out. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll do that again, Mr. President. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Um, it might be the maybe the AC. Okay. Um, yeah, this is a, an agreement, Mr. President, that the, the board so approves the Department of Health, the county's Department of Health will um, apply for right to know inspections in areas of air, health, water, solid waste inspection, and then make those uh, its findings in the New Jersey Environmental Management System. And again, there's a, um, a budget insertion coming up later in the agenda if the board so approves to provide for uh, funding. Thank you. Mr. Paul Vecchio. I don't have any questions. Mr. McInerney. No questions on this. Commissioners, questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Cooper and a second from Commissioner Gill. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Johnson absent. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move the resolutions six through eight which are from the Department of Public Works and will be read into the record at a later time. Mr. Jay. Mr. President, uh, David Antonio will handle these items. Good evening, Commissioners. David Antonio, Department of Public Works. Item number six is a 24-month contract extension to Joseph Smenkowski Incorporated to provide waste, tire removal, and disposal services. This contract shall not exceed $100,000. Again, it is for a 24-month period. Uh, also note that this service not only is used to dispose of waste tires generated by the county's street operations, but also those collected during the county's public tire recycling events. Item number seven is a contract change order with Alemo Group Consulting Engineers to provide MEP engineering services for the rooftop unit replacement project at the juvenile detention center in Newark. This will add an amount not to exceed $10,000 to the existing contract. This will increase the existing contract by 12.6%. Additional engineering scope of work has been identified as being needed in order to interconnect the new rooftop units with the existing buildings Management System, or BMS. Item number eight is a contract award to Multifor Systems Incorporated to provide support and maintenance for the Fuel Force Fuel Management System. This will be a 24-month agreement, non-fair and open contract, not to exceed $50,000. This funding will allow for communication updates at the nine county-operated fueling stations. As you may know, the sunsetting of the nation's 3G cellular network requires action to be taken now to ensure that our nine fueling stations remain fully operational. If there are any questions, I will take them at this time. Thank you. Mr. Paul Vecchio. Yes, Mr. President. 
Uh, Mr. Antonio, on number six, with the contract yeah. extension, uh, what was the uh, amount spent on those initial years of contract? It's an amount now not to exceed 100000 Right. So, so far, we've experienced 20, north of $20,000 per year. Mr. President, if I may interrupt, someone needs to put their uh, phone on mute. We're hearing background no noise or conversation. Excuse me, Mr. President. Mr. Palavecchio? Uh, I'm good. Mr. Antonio? Okay. Mr. McInerney? No questions. Commissioners, questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Graham and a second from Commissioner Mercado to take resolution six to eight as one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Cooper? Yes. Commissioner Gill? Yes. Commissioner Graham? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Johnson, absent. Commissioner Luciano? Yes. Commissioner Mercado? Yes. Commissioner Siebel? Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? Yes. Commissioner President Richardson? Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move the resolutions 9 through 11, which are from the Department of Parks, and it will be read into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Uh, Mr. President, Mr. Zates will handle these items. Uh, Joshua Zates, Essex County Parks. Number nine is a contract award with Motivated Ser Security Services, the lowest responsible bidder to provide security service at the Turtleback Zoo. 24-month contract not to exceed $257,010.40. Uh, specifically, this is for overnight hours and holidays to provide security at the zoo. The hourly rate is $22.62. And we do have a representative from the company on the line to uh, give you more details on the contract. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, this is Mark Savage of Motivated Security Services. Um, I'd be happy to entertain any questions that you might have about the contract. Uh, I was hearing that. Security I'm sorry. We are a security service agency. Uh, the company has been in incorporated since 1991, headquartered in Somerville, New Jersey. Uh, we have provided other services in Essex County, currently providing security services at a number of charter schools, both in Irvington and Newark, um, and in the past have provided security services for the Newark Housing Authority. In addition to that, we've uh, were fortunate enough that we were the were the low bidder, responsive bidder, that is, on this contract um, to, to provide the security services overnight and on the holidays at the zoo for the next 24 months. Uh, any questions that you may have, please feel free to ask away. Thank you. Uh, Joshua, is this part of the parks? Okay. Uh, Josh, if I could just a quick question on number um, nine here. Uh, in addition to the overnight and holiday service that this firm provides, is uh, regular hours um, security exclusively provided by the sheriff's office, or is there a different? Uh, Joshua is HS County Parks. Through you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Palavecchio, that is correct. During uh, operating hours, uh, the this, this sheriff's department is responsible for security. Okay, and they don't do anything. Uh, is this supplemental for overnight and holidays, or do, does this firm now take over for sheriffs on the overnight and the holidays? Uh, this firm would be uh, solely responsible for overnight security. Okay. Uh, thank you. Mr. President, I have a question. Okay, let's get to Mr. McInerney first, and then we'll come to the commission. Okay, well, I thought you were done. Uh, I don't have any questions. Yeah. Have Commissioner Siebel. All right, I have a question because this is provi you're providing security services. How many people will provide those services over the course of a over the course of a week? We will have four individuals providing services: one in the evening, one overnight, and of course accounting for the other two people on days off for the other personnel. 
So you'll just have one person at night. At, at a time. Periods. Correct, yes. yes. Uh, one person is enough to provide security for the entire zoo. So the scope of work that was is designated for the for the uh, the account, uh, yes, we feel it is. The person right, is really thanks. responsible for patrol. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so that's for overnight, and why on holidays? You mean when the zoo is closed? When the when the staff when the staff leaves, um, the the understanding is that the the staff leaves a little earlier than what the regular scheduled time is on the holiday. Uh, whenever the whenever the zoo is closed, we'll be there. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for the information. You're welcome, Mr. You're President. Welcome. Can I ask a question, Mr. McInerney? So, um, how how does the one person inside the zoo? How is that person monitored? Are there stations that he has to uh, check into around the zoo during the course of his uh, shift? Yes, yes, there are. There are there's, there's a number of stations, 15, I believe. Um, and on each of his patrols, he's using an electronic tour system, which will, with a proximity reader, which he'll be able to, he'll, he'll touch. And then the information is then sent back to the, back online, knowing exactly what the person is doing and when he's doing it. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Mr. President? Uh, quick question. Is this the first time we're Commissioner doing Cooper. this? Uh, is this the first time that we're doing this overnight security service? Uh, Joshua Zates, S. County Parks. To you, Mr. President. Uh, no, we have had uh, uh, different vendors in the past, uh, the most recent being uh, Community Enterprises. Uh, I believe this is the first time we're using this particular company, but we have had uh, these services provided by uh, a private vendor previously. Okay, thank you. I, I have a question, Mr. President. Commissioner. Why is it a new vendor? Siebel. Why is it a new vendor? Joshua is HS County Parks to you, Mr. President. Uh, the motivated security was the lowest bidder when we uh, bid this this contract. And different from the the firm you used last year. Uh, I, I apologize. I couldn't I couldn't understand what you're saying. I said different from the firm you used last year. That is correct. All right. Thanks, Josh. Commissioners, any other questions? I just have one. Do you employ any Essex County residents? The plan is to, is to employ all Essex County residents for this job. So when is the job supposed to start? And so as March of this 12th. moment, you don't have any employees that are going to fill those slots. So you have oh, to no, hire we, all Essex County residents. Is that my understanding? No, the, the job I, is scheduled to start on March 1st. And the, the the people that we are anticipating hiring are actually people who are existing working at the at the contract for the prior vendor, who are Essex County residents. Gotcha, Mr. Mr. President. I, I have a question again, Mr. McInerney. How, how many employees do you currently have now on your payroll? Overall, the company. Sure. Overall, the company has 950 employees. Okay. Thank you very much. Go well. Zaitz. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Joshua Zaitz, Ms. Kennedy Parks. Uh, number 10 is a contract award to Central Nebraska Packing to furnish and deliver frozen animal meat. 24 month contract not to uh, uh, exceed 300,000. This is a non fair and open contract. This is the first time we are entering into a non fair and open for any of the food over at the Turtleback Zoo. We have been finding it uh, more and more difficult to secure uh, pricing for more than six months. So this enables us to uh, have a vendor for a full 24 months, and then the pricing could fluctuate based on the market. We would go out and get quotes for the various meats and then um, uh, pay for it uh, accordingly. This is for any animal in the zoo that eats meat, uh, lions, uh, you name it, wolves. Uh, and there's there's a whole list of different kinds of meat, horse short, horse shank bones, horse knuckle bones, horse neck bones. Personally, nothing that sounds too appetizing for me. Uh, number 11 is a contract award 
to provide graphic arts and design services with Iris Communications uh, April 25th of this year through April 24th of next year, not to exceed $134,900. This is uh, with Iris Communications for any kind of graphics that we have, uh, be it t-shirt design, postcards, rack cards, banners, signs. Uh, this is a woman-owned uh, business and also a small, small business. And I am happy to answer any questions the board may have. Paul Vecchio? I don't have any questions. Mr. McInerney? No questions. Commissioners? Commissioner Seabolt? Thank you very much. Uh, I think Iris Communications does a wonderful job. They've been doing this for a number of years, and I think it's a great company. And I understand they're from Roseland. Is that correct? Uh, for you, uh, Joshua Zates, Mr. County Parks. Through you, Mr. President, and uh, Commissioner Seabolt, that is correct. They are based in Roseland. Thank you very much. Commissioners, questions or comments? I, I just have a comment. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I could be mistaken. Uh, I think I had a, we had a conversation maybe the last time they got this contract where uh, the Board of Commissioners were left off some of the uh, publications. So I just want to make sure that, uh, Mr. Zay, that that doesn't happen uh, this year. Uh, certainly, that was, that was an oversight, and uh, we assure you it will not happen again. Thank you very much. Mr. President, I'm sorry. I was trying to unmute to ask a quick question. Commissioner Cooper. Is this the group that's responsible for doing that summer mail out that we get for the listing of all the activities and the billboards that we see within the park for activities? Uh, Joshua Zates, Esk County Parks. To you, Mr. President. Uh, the the actual mailing that you're referring to, the uh, the eight or 12 page brochure, that is that is a different company um, that we contract out to to do that that publication um but the billboards you would see would be under iris communications they would design those so then what does iris do you said that they do the billboards and what else do they do for you they would do billboards uh postcards uh t-shirts if we were doing some kind of t-shirt with one of our events uh any basically anything other than that that publication you alluded to anything involving graphics is your office responsible for handling that publication that get mailed out that thick one a really nice one uh parks parks is parks through with with the vendor uh works on it together uh we we review it um public information also reviews it and then once it's finalized it, it gets mailed out all right thank you and yeah, just one more comment about the billboards you know the board of commissioners we have a we have a picture with all of our with all of us on it. So I'd like to see uh, on those billboards. I'd like to see those uh, that commissioner uh, picture on those billboards as well. Because a lot of times, I see a lot of a lot of dead space and a lot of folks on those billboards, and the commissioners are somewhere in the corner on the back of the billboard, very small. You can barely read it. Uh, cer certainly, I would bring that to the attention of the the parks director and deputy director, and I'm, I'm sure is I'm sure if it's uh, aesthetically pleasing, we will be happy to incorporate that. So we're trying to say if we look good, if we don't look <laughs> that, good, it won't go I'm on. Saying, what do you What do you say? I I think <laughs> uh, I think having seen no other commissioner board in the state, I will say that the Essex County Commissioner Board is is by far the most attractive. <laughs> that still may not get us on a billboard because <laughs> we may not be aesthetically pleasing i got you always it look good, president you always look good <laughs> all right if there are no more questions or comments i have a motion from commissioner sebo and a second from commissioner luciano to take resolutions 9 through 11 is one roll call madam clerk commissioner cooper Yes. Commissioner Gill? Yes, and Mr. President, I look forward to you touching up your headshots to make sure that they're aesthetically pleasing enough for the administration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think all nine of us are going to have to do so. I know. We might have to start our own health, you know. <laughs> we'll, we'll do some training and everything. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Graham. Yes. 
Commissioner Johnson, absent. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Palmares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam the resolution and eight, which are from the office of the sheriff, and then we'll be at. Did he say twelve and thirteen? I said twelve and fifty-eight. Twelve, thirteen, and fifty-eight, Mr. President. <laughs> Not coming through clearly, President. I'm not. No. All right. Mr. Jackson. Uh, yes, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Coultry will handle these three items. Mr. President, uh, Julius Coultry, Deputy Administrator, Purchasing Agent. Uh, this is for the Office of the Sheriff, acceptance of a sub grant award for the Federal Emergency Management Agency program assistance funds in the amount of $110,000. $55,000 will be grant. The other $55,000 is in kind for salary and wages. And it starts July 1st, 2021 to June 20th, uh, 2022. And this is for the purpose of updating their program for terrorism, natural disasters, and any other emergencies for response and recovery. Number 13 is the Office of Purchasing to Finari to provide psychological examinations for various agencies, prosecutors, Mr. officers. Coulter. Yes. Mr. President, you're breaking up. Tickets froze. I only see four commissioners. Just want to make sure we have enough people. I believe here. Commissioner Graham is who, on. Who said I'm here? Who said I'm here? Com Commissioner Graham. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Commissioner Graham is participating by phone for this meeting. Oh, that's okay. I, I just didn't see uh, the green light, so now I got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Counselor. Mr. President, we're doing 13. He's not coming through correctly. He's frozen. Mr. Coltry. Yes. I have 12 and 58, and we're going to come back to 13. Okay. 58 is for the Office of the Sheriff Contract Award to Frank's Truck Center. Purchase of a 2021 or newer Chevrolet Tahoe sports utility van. Uh, it's part of a voluntary co op amount not to exceed $58,669. This vehicle is also um, being funded through uh, insurance. Uh, the original vehicle was uh, totally damaged and it's a replacement vehicle. Okay. Mr. Paul Vecchio. I don't have any questions, Mr. 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 McInerney. No questions, Mr. President. Commissioners, questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Mercado and a second from Commissioner Vice President Pomares to take resolutions 12 and 15 as one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Do we lose the clerk too? No. You're muted. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Johnson, absent. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. 
Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Okay. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, please be reminded we will conduct a public comment session for the non agenda items at the end of the meeting. Ending <coughs> Clerk, can you give them the call in information, please? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Uh, if you're calling in, the number is 855 756 7520 and use the password 78874. That's 78874. After entering the password, listen for the prompt to press zero to be placed in the queue to speak during the meeting. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to resolution number 13, which is from the Office of Purchasing and will be added to the, read into the record at a later time. Mr. President, Julius Coultry, purchasing agent. Um, this is a contract extension for Dr. Susan A. Fanari for fitness of duty and psychological testing for the prosecutor's office, for the sheriff's office, and for uh, our corrections department. Uh, not to exceed $322,000 expended in the last contract period was $169,540. Uh, each psychological is 370 per test. Fitness for duty is $550 per test. And uh, Ms. Venari is a WBE from Nutley, New Jersey. Mr. Paul Vecchio. No questions. Mr. McInerney. You're muted, sir. Uh, was any of her money uh, by COVID? Sorry, hold on one second. All right, here we go. Here we go. Was any of her uh, was any of this uh, these fees funded by COVID during the last year or two? Not to my knowledge, uh, Mr. McInerney, but we can find that out for you. I'm yeah, just curious if we hired new people for that and whether or not that was a charge of item. Commissioner, what's your comment? I have a motion from Commissioner Seaborn and a second from Commissioner Vice President Pomaris. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Graham? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Johnson, absent. Commissioner Luciano? Yes. Commissioner Mercado? Yes. Commissioner Siebel? Yes. Commissioner Vice President Palmares? Yes. Commissioner President Richardson? Yes. So moved. Okay, Madam Clerk, let's move to resolutions 14 through 16, which are from the Department of Corrections, and we'll read them into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, directors Ortiz and Perillo will handle these items. Good evening. Um, Alfaro Ortiz, Director, Essex County Correctional Facility, item number 14, Department of Corrections contract award to SDA Laundry Tech. LLC, the sole responsible, uh, responsive, responsible bidder to provide repair of laundry equipment from March 11, 2022 through March 10, 2024, amount not to exceed $200,000. That's for the repair of all the laundry equipment that we have throughout the institution of the inmate laundry, uh, provide inmate laundry services. Item 15, Department of Corrections contract with Schedule Soft Corporation to provide scheduling software for Essex County Correctional Facility from March 1st, 2022 through February 28th, 2024, amount not to exceed $74,496. That is for the scheduling uh, program that we use for the close to 700 uh, corrections people that we have, the scheduling on all three shifts, days off, vacation picks and whatever is obviously a very uh, complicated matter. With regard to item 16, uh, Director Perillo. 
Yes. Can uh, Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Um, I'm here to speak about the LeoTef uh, grant that we're going to receive. Um, the Police Training Commission has what they call Law Enforcement Officers Training and Equipment Fund, where they allocate monies to or grant money to academies based on the amount of recruits that we put in. Um, this year's allocation was $17,448 uh, for our academy, and it goes towards equipment that, that uh, we use and need for training. Okay, next. Mr. President, I think that's, in, that's it for that segment of corrections. Oh, okay. Mr. Paul Vecchio. I don't have any questions on this. McInerney. I have no questions, Mr. President. Commissioners, questions or comments? Hearing that, I have a motion from Commissioner Sebo and a second from Vice President Morris to take resolutions 14 through 16 as one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Johnson, absent Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner McCardo. Yes. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to resolution 17 through 30, which are temporary appropriations from various state and local agencies, and we'll read them into the record at a later time. Mr. Jackson. Thank you, sir. Uh, Director Perillo will handle item 17. I do not hear him, so I'll just do it. This is uh, connected with item 16 that the board just approved. This is the funding to provide for the equipment that uh, Director Perillo uh, mentioned uh, under item 16. Uh, item 18 um, uh, also is, is a, uh, uh, where am I, 18, 18. Uh, temporary emergency, emergency appropriation, Department of Law Safety System for Body Armor for the Department of Corrections and the amount of $25,737.67. Uh, this is to with a five-year useful life. This will provide for approximately 26 uh, vests. Uh, item 19, uh, Department of Corrections will provide for the MAT program. Uh, mental health and addiction services in lieu of, uh, in lieu of other uh, treatment that, that, that are available at the, the uh, facility. This will treat up to uh, 1,500 in inmates and it's a grant period of July 1, 2021 through June 30, 2022. Item 20, uh, similarly, is and that, that's funding that $700,000 for item 19. So that comes from the state of New Jersey. Item 20 is, fed, is funding from the federal government in the amount of $1.2 million. Uh, and this is also for the, uh, for the corrections uh, MAT program. Um, let's see. Item 21 uh, is, with the, is connected to item uh, 15, that, I'm sorry, uh, item five uh, earlier um, uh, related to the CIHA grant. In the amount of $276,002, there's a county match of uh, $257,370 for this uh, uh, grant. Um, item 22, um, Department of the Sheriff. This is also for body armor in the amount of $15,715.20 to provide for approximately 15 uh, vests and there's no uh, county match uh, under this program. Uh, Mr. Smith uh, will handle items 23 through 30. Mr. Smith. <clears throat> thank you, thank you. Um, good evening, Mr. President, Board of Commissioners, Madam Clerk. Um, my name is Eric Smith. I'm the Senior Data Processing Programmer for the Essex County Division of Senior Services. Uh, item number twenty twenty three is um <clears throat> is uh, asking um the the board of commissioners for approval of grant award application for fiscal year two thousand twenty two statewide respite care program 
in the amount of $594,515. Um, item number 24 is a temporary emergency appropriation from the state of New Jersey, Department of Human Services, Divisional Agent for Statewide Respite Care Program. Um, for the, to the Essex County Division of Senior Services in that amount of $594,515. Um, item number 25 is um, the uh, <clears throat> request of approval for the 2022 service providers and rates under the Respite Care Services Grant in an amount not to exceed $481,556.01. Uh, item number 26 is um, a, a temporary emergency appropriation from the state of New Jersey, Department of Human Services, Divisional Agent for Respite, for Respite Care Program Income to the Division of Senior Services in the amount of $23,560.13. Uh, item number um, 27 is um, a temporary emergency appropriation from the, <clears throat> excuse me, from the um, Jersey Assistance for Community Caregivers Assistance Program for Care Coordination Program Income to the Division of Senior Services in the amount of $73,630.24. And item number 28 is um, uh, another um, emergency appropriation from the State of New Jersey Division on Aging for, two, for 2020 state aid reimbursement funds to the Essex County Division of Senior Services in the amount of $58,000. And item number 29 uh, is a temporary emergency appropriation from the New Jersey Transit for 2019 Federal Transit Administration Section 5310 grant program to the Essex County Division of Senior Services in the amount of $150,000. And item number 30 is a, a emergency appropriation from the New Jersey Transit for senior, for the Senior Citizen and Disabled Resident Transportation Program to the Essex County Division of Senior Services for $1,768,771.07. Item number 31. And if you have any questions, I'm, I'm here to free to answer any questions you may have. Mr. Paul Avecchio. No questions, Mr. President. Mr. McInerney. These are all grant appropriations, Mr. President. I have no questions. Commissioners, questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion for Commissioner Cooper. Thank you. Is anybody all who can explain item number 19, how that program works? Um, uh, Commissioner, uh, what we what we intended to do is when we come in for the the, uh, the awarding of the program to go through with the board uh, an, ex uh, an expansive uh, explanation of how that works. Um, uh, we'll have Dr. Anisette uh, and company come on and explain. This is just inserting the dollars for the program, but when we do the actual contract, we'll have we'll go through an ex expansive um, expl explanation. Um, but basically, this is a program. To, to help uh, inmates who are in our facility to overcome um, uh, incidents of um, if they have um, potential overdose of the types of treatment uh, for drug uh, issues. Um, this is a, has proven to be a very successful program. I, I will leave it up to um, Director Ortiz and, our, and uh, the, uh, the Warden Cirillo and Dr. Anderson to go into more detail. But again, we'll do that when we come back for the board uh, with the contract. Do you know when that, do you anticipate that on being the timeline for that? Do you remember, Matt, we did it last year? I think it was May, so probably, yeah, I think it was, I think it was uh, May, June timeframe. Okay. All right, thank you. Commissioners, any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner McCarroll and a second from Commissioner Luciano to take resolution 17 through 30 as one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Siebel? Yes. Commissioner Mercado? Yes. Commissioner Luciano? Yes. Commissioner Johnson, absent. Commissioner Graham? Yes. Commissioner Gill? Yes. Commissioner Cooper? Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares? Yes. 
Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Let's move to resolutions 31 through 57, which are all accommodations and memoriams and proclamation resolutions. And we will add them to the record at a later time. Commissioners, any questions or comments? Madam Clerk, uh, 42 says Commissioner Johnson is not on. It's honoring the Essex County uh, College of Men's Basketball team for winning the 2019-2020 NJCAA East B Division Region State Basketball Championship. I'd like to see that uh, be uh, via acclamation. Okay, we will uh, change that to by acclamation, Mr. President. Thank you so much. Commissioner. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I have a motion from Commissioner Graham and a second from Commissioner McConnell to take resolutions 31 through 57 as one. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner McCardo. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Johnson, absent Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Yes. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Yes. Commissioner President Richardson. Yes. So moved. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Are there any added starters? Uh, Mr. President, yes, there is one. Uh, the added starter is, I believe, um, Resolution 59. Yes, res Resolution 59. Mr. Jackson, please explain the resolution, please. Mr. President, Julius Coltree, uh, Agent Deputy Administrator. This is a commission of registration superintendent of election contract uh, with best shipping ever in region A and Main Street movers in region B to provide a voting machine to move from various election polling places along with other, any other material. Uh, best shipping, the lowest bidder was $106.50 per machine and Main Street Movers was $115 per machine for moving, not to exceed $400,000, Mr. President. So the, the, so the Brant, Brantley Brothers no longer has a contract? Brantley Brothers does not have the contract. We received three total bids, these two vendors and General Moving Carriers, LLC. And where are these two vendors located? One is located in Berkeley Heights, that's Main Street Movers, and best shipping ever is in Hackensack, New Jersey. It's six and any of them employ any Essex County resident? Not to my knowledge, but I can find that out for you. Mr. Paul Avecchia. I don't have any questions. Mr. McInerney. Uh, no questions, Mr. President. Commissioners, questions or comments? Mr. McGill. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, on the contract itself, um, I know we experienced some challenges with the last um, with the last set of deliveries uh, during that election cycle. Are did we did we make any adjustments in this contract as a result of uh, our experience? Meaning, are there additional penalties? and or other um, clauses to help ensure that we don't have the same experience that we had last time? Uh, we do not have any clauses in the contract. However, what they did is they separated the contract into two zones, an A zone and a B zone. And in the contract, they allowed for if one of the vendors cannot complete the job at that, but the other vendor may be able to do it. So those were the only changes. They cut, they create the county in half, 
And then they also made a provision in there that if one vendor is not capable of handling the job, the other vendor can do it. Thank you. So just, just uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, uh, Commissioner. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. President, that, that answered my question, thank you. No, thank you. So the Brantley brothers didn't have that benefit? At that particular time, the Board of Election, the Commissioner of Registration only had one vendor for the entire county. That was their solicitation at the time. Commissioner, Commissioner Cooper. I don't have this resolution in my packet. Um, was it, did you say it was the ad started? Was it emailed to us? Yes, it was emailed to you. It was an added starter. Yes, it was emailed. Through you, Mr. Uh, President. Uh, what, what is this resolution for, please? It's for the voting machines, you said? Yes, uh, Mr. President. It's for delivery of voting machines for all the elections for the next two years, not to exceed $400,000. And all the other equipment, whether it's signs, flags, et cetera, that they have to deliver. And did you say that it's two vendors now or one? There are two vendors, uh, the superintendent of election, uh, in their specifications, cut the county in half so no one vendor would be overwhelmed. So who are the two vendors now, please? Since I don't have the, the resolution, I'm trying right. to look at my email. Commissioner, for area A, it's best shipping ever from Hackensack, New Jersey, and their bid was $106.50 per machine per delivery. And the other one was Main Street Movers of Berkeley Heights, New Jersey, and they were at $115 per machine per delivery. So the prior vendor didn't bid at all? Or were they prior, precluded from bidding? Prior vendor did not bid at all. We had a total of three vendors. The other vendor was General Moving Carriers, and their bid was $299.13 per machine. Um, please correct me. If the, the prior vendor was a Newark based, uh, a, a county based vendor, right? It was a North based vendor uh, from Freeland Heights and Avenue. Yes, they were. And these two now are new people. You said Berkeley Heights and Hackensack. Both, uh, Main Street Movers, uh, we used them a few years ago. And these are two new vendors for this particular bid. <clears throat> And the Brantley brothers, I guess their contract um, ended and that's why you went back out to bid? Yes. All right, thank you. Commissioners, any other questions or comments? Here and now I have a motion from Commissioner Gill and a second from Commissioner Cooper. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Siebel. Yes. Commissioner Mercado. Yes. Commissioner Luciano. Yes. Commissioner Johnson, absent. Commissioner Graham. Yes. Commissioner Gill. Yes. Commissioner Cooper. Present, not voting. Commissioner Vice President Pomares. Yes. Uh, Commissioner President Richardson. No. So moved. Okay, Madam Clerk, let's move the board to move report and board committees. Commissioners, do we have any reports of board committees? Um, Mr. President, we are scheduled to have a T and R committee meeting. I got a couple emails. The office got phone calls on it. Um, March 22nd, I believe, um, for the constituents that's interested 
we will send out a notice or um, an email to those people who um, generally contact us to let them know, um, confirm that date and time, but I believe it's March 22nd. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any legislative report? Any written communications? Any unfinished business? Any new business? Okay, Madam Clerk, let's move to public comment session on non-agenda items. However, since we are meeting remotely, the public had an opportunity to submit questions and comments for consideration, and they also have the opportunity to call in. Madam Clerk. You will be acknowledged to speak in the order that your call was received. Emails received for public comment will be read after the calls are completed. Uh, at this time, um, our public information officer, uh, Charlo Malumba, uh, will begin our public comment session now for non-agenda items. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Charlo Malumba, public information officer for the Essex County Board of Commissioners. We do not have any callers waiting to speak at this time. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, we also we do not have any emails or written course correspondence for non-agenda items for the public comment. Thank you, Madam Clerk. In that case, commissioners, do you have any comments you would like to make at this time? Yes, Mr. President. Commissioner Sebo. I was very saddened to learn today that our wonderful county council, Courtney, Courtney Gashione, is retiring. I truly can't believe that you are leaving us, Courtney. I feel so bad that you will be gone. I really, really do. But I want to wish you the very best on your retirement. Thank you very much, Commissioner. I'm not yet. I'm not retiring yet. So don't. I. I, I have a little bit life left in me before I retire. But I am moving on to another position. So I thank you very. Thank you very much for the the well wishes. I appreciate. Well, it. that's the notice that I received today. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. President, Courtney, best of luck to you. Thank you, Frank. Right no, here. absolutely. You, you've been a star wars and a, 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 a steady hand for us, uh, sometimes kind of like misguided folks. <laughs> you've yeah. always been steady, so the best to you. Thank and you very much. Yeah. And, and I will be here for one more meeting in, in March, so you're, you're, not, you're not done with me yet. Okay. Well, that's too soon. <laughs> There was no drama. It was just whatever it was, it was. Yeah. Very, and I've but, seen many different county councils, and you by far have been just about the best we have had. Thank some you, were Mr. good, some were okay, but you've been <laughs> absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. In that case, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor. Bye. Bye. Take care, everyone. Be safe. Good night. Be safe, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.